Hello everybody, I uh, left you hanging off a cliff last time and I'm going to rescue you this time. Uh, we talked about the ceasefire that was brought about by Mother Teresa, now Saint Teresa, in 1982 in Beirut, and how that gives us a clue to uh, the fact that war, which seems so absolutely inevitable and unstoppable, can be deconstructed. But I don't think that it's possible to simply dismantle the system. Among other things, people are in a very deep state of fear right now, especially in the United States, and they believe wrongly, but they're pinned on that belief that their military capability is going to make them secure. And because they don't know of an alternative, even though this has been disproven time and time again, uh, the belief is not shaken. So I, I'm leading up to a major point about shifting the paradigm, and that is it cannot be done only through reason. You have to be able to, to as Gandhi said, move the heart also. Okay, so that's for a future uh, conversation. But right now I want to talk about how could we possibly undermine the war system. If we can't dismantle it from the top, we can undermine it from below. That is, create a system which serves the purpose of give, making us secure, and then the old system, which isn't working, will more or less just fall away. Even if it doesn't just fall away by itself, it will be a pushover. It'll be easy to get rid of it when we have an alternative. So without being able to put a timeline to this, here's what we've come up with. It's, uh, we call this three giant steps for peace. The first step is to establish restorative justice in the nation's schools. We've talked about restorative justice before. To remind you, it's instead of a punitive system, when a, a child, a pupil has misbehaved in some way, you get him or her into a dialogue with the people that he or she has offended, injured, and together work out as a community and building community in the process what would be a good restitution. And we like the idea of starting there because it's almost done. And this is how you want to proceed in a long-term strategy. Start with things that are doable or almost there already build on them to the next stage. And what would be the next stage in this case? Well, at this point in time, as you're probably aware, we have almost two million, two million of our fellow citizens are in prison or in part of the prison system. And that is a dreadfully retributive system which is not working at all. We're being forced to release people from the prisons just because they're so overcrowded uh, but that does nothing towards restoring them. So if we do this restorative justice in the schools and it's a critical addition and explain why it's working because people respond to dignity, they respond to respect. They always want to be reintegrated into the community, however much they may deny that. We could move from restorative justice in the schools to restorative justice in the criminal justice system, which would not only bring the United States in line with other industrial countries, but put us on a trajectory where we could get from that second stage to the third stage, where we bring in the alternatives to war and create a system along restorative lines so that when there is a, dis a dispute between nations, uh, they are uh, agreed to and adjudicated in a civilized process of conversation, building on the fact that we've now done it in our school system and even in our prison system. I see that as a plausible pathway to the end of war. And I look forward to celebrating the conclusion of that process with you.